Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. I just received the new version of Crossbows and Catapults from Restoration Games. So I figure we'll bust it open and I'll show you what's inside. I did the all-in pledge level, so I should have a copy of everything they offer. First we have the weapons cache. This should include the trebuchet and the ballista. Next up we have the builder's bounty. I actually bought two copies of this because I wanted to have a lot of stuff to build. Then we have the storage bags, one for each faction. These are the pieces of golden ammo. And I bought the Fortress War set of the core game, which is the larger of the two. Here's a look at everything that came in the box before I unwrap it. Now we'll open up the Fortress War box and see what we got. We're immediately greeted by the two bags of building pieces. The gray for, I believe, the goblins. And the tan color, which will be for the dwarves. Then underneath that, we can see these. I think these are the flags to delineate the play area. A bag of ammo. We've got red and black. These look like castle doors. And of course, the eponymous crossbows. You'll immediately notice that these do not use rubber bands, like the version from the 1980s. Now I'll pull out this insert. We have the bag of all the miniatures, the goblins and the dwarves. We've got some specialty building pieces for the gray castle. And here are the catapults. Just like the crossbows, they don't require any rubber bands and they are spring loaded. They also have this adjustment dial. That you can change the angle. I think that's very cool. The ones from the 80s, you couldn't really aim that well. So this should be fun. And of course, there's another one in there. We also have the specialty building pieces for the beige castle. And we have a small cardboard box. I have no idea what's in here, so let's pop it open. These are a couple extra figures. I'm not sure what these are for, but they look like they can hold a piece of ammo. So maybe these guys are responsible for loading your weapons or something. We've got a collection of cards. We'll take a look at these in more detail later. They give you an empty plastic bag for storing some bits. And of course the game manual run through this very quickly just to show you the different stuff that's inside shows you how to build shows you how to play all the basics here then we've got some sticker sheets these are for the ammo and then we have this other one that i don't think has a gameplay purpose it's just so you can customize your set and then it looks like we have some cardboard cutout terrain pieces that you can build and scatter around your battlefield. I just realized I forgot to show you the back of the box, so I'll do that now.
And that's it for the base game box. Let's take a look at the other packages. We'll take a look at the weapons cache next. First off, we have some additional ammunition. And sticker sheets for the ammo. And first we'll take a look at the ballista. This looks really similar to the crossbows that came with the original game in the 80s. Except it has a piece of elastic instead of a rubber band. And of course we have the trebuchet. Which is like a very large catapult. But you can load two pieces of ammunition on it. It also has an angle adjustment using this screw in the front. I'm really liking the quality of these weapons and the fact that you don't need to continually put new rubber bands on them. I do wonder how long these things will last, though. Anyways, that's it for the weapons cache. Now we'll take a look at the Builder's Bounty. Looks like it gives us two more bags of building pieces, one of each color. I'm going to assume that these are the exact same pieces that come with the base game. Also have the tan ones here. And it looks like they also give you these couple of specialty pieces of each color. That's it for the Builder's Bounty. Now we'll take a look at the bags and the golden ammo. The golden ammo is pretty straightforward. It's golden ammo. It does come with this little sticker you can put in the game manual. Looks like there's some special rules for this ammo. And there's also stickers for the ammo itself. Now we'll take a look at the storage bags. Let me lay these out on the table for you. There we have the goblins and the dwarves. Their own design. Looks like they go together there. Make one seamless image. Now I'm going to return back to the content of the base game and show you some of the things in more detail. Starting with a quick look at all the cards. Here are the card backs. Looks like there's a couple of treasure cards, goblin cards, and dwarf cards. We'll look at these treasure cards first. On the other side, looks like there's treasure for the dwarves and the goblins. This is one of the win conditions for the game, to land a piece of ammunition on that card. And then the cards for the actual factions. Looks like they're different characters. So I didn't look at the miniatures yet, but maybe there are different miniatures that have different effects. I'll just go through these really quick. You can pause the video if you want to read any of the cards. Oh, they also give you a couple of blank cards if you want to do some home brewing. And now we'll look at the dwarf faction cards. And this also has the two blanks. Now I'll give you a closer look at that sticker sheet. You can see it says at the top the stickers are provided for fun and are not part of the official game. Use them to decorate your building pieces. So they don't have any special rules or anything. You can customize it however you wish. Then we also have ammunition stickers. Looks like some of the ammunition gets special stickers on them so maybe they have special rules i think i saw that on the cards there's also some cardboard terrain pieces here looks like you punch them out and assemble them and they'll stand up and we'll take a closer look at the manual here Here 
Here we have the game and battlefield set up. What I really like is you can use the manual itself as a ruler to lay out your battlefield. However, it looks like the battlefield's much smaller than it was back in the 80s. I think back then they wanted six feet. In this case, it's much smaller, so you can actually fit the game on your regular board gaming table. Now we'll keep going through the manual. Here are the rules for setting up your castle and how to actually play the game, along with some optional rules on the back. Now we'll take a closer look at the ammunition. As you can see, it comes in red and black. I'm not sure yet what the difference is. Maybe the goblins get one color, the dwarves get another. These look really similar to the original game, although if memory serves, they're a little bit thinner, but maybe a little bit wider around. Not sure, it's been a really long time. Now we'll take a look at the miniatures. We'll open up this bag and see what we got. Here we got a little goblin warrior with a two-headed spear or something. Then another one, was he wearing boxing gloves? Here's one with a crossbow, I think. Then we have another one with the spear. I think those are sort of your your basic goblins here and we have i guess he looks like some kind of wizard or shaman and there's this one who appears to have some kind of flamethrower there's a few more of these basic spear goblins and then we have one with a big banner i assume this is the leader And then there's some little shields here. I think I saw a picture of you being able to place these into your build and it'll go between the bricks or something. Now we'll take a look at the dwarves. Here's one with a big hammer as a dwarf should have. And we have a fist fighting dwarf. Maybe you can box the boxing goblin. It looks like the hammer dwarves are the basic ones in this case. The dwarves have their own flamethrower. And the dwarven leader. And here's the dwarven crossbowman. And another style dwarf with a hammer. And finally, there are also round dwarven shields you can put into your build. There's also those couple of figures that were in the little box. Here's a closer look at them. Here's the goblin. And the dwarf. I have to assume that that little stand is to hold a piece of ammunition. So I think these are responsible for loading your weapons or something. Now we have the flags or banners. These are going to go around the battlefield to indicate the boundaries. Here we have the dwarven one in blue. And the green goblin one. Now let's take a look at the building pieces. Here's your basic wall piece. That little slot is to fit the little shields that I showed you earlier. Then we have this tower piece. Then we have a sort of stony base. And here's a large tower. They give you an archway. Then there's this. I'm not sure what this is. Some kind of 
jail door or, or portcullis or bars. Now I just want to see how these all fit together. So I'll build a little wall with some of these pieces. They don't really lock into place. They just kind of sit on top of each other, which is good because you want them to be destroyed. The tower does kind of go on a little bit snugly. So it looks like some of the pieces are a little more stable than others. Oh, I just noticed this little stairway piece. That's pretty cool. And there's a little castle assembly. We also have a couple of specialty pieces here. Looks like we have a sort of balcony and a sort of steeple with a round window in it. And they also attach pretty snugly to the top. Now we'll take a look at the weapons, starting with the crossbow. I'm pretty curious to see how these fire, so let's give it a quick little test drive here. That felt a little more powerful than I expected it to be, which is nice. Now we'll load up the catapult and give this a test fire. We'll try adjusting the angle a little bit first. Yeah, that feels very similar to the original game. Let's try one more shot. Oh! Now we'll take a closer look at the weapons in the weapons cache. We'll start with the ballista, and we'll give this a test fire. Oh wow, that thing's really powerful. Unlike the crossbows in the original game, this actually shoots the ammunition through the air. So you do get a little bit of a different effect than the standard crossbow. Now let's load up the trebuchet and give this a shot. Give it a little angle adjustment here. Oh wow, that fires pretty far. Very nice. Here's a look at everything set up from the core box, including the cardboard cutouts and constructed castles. Now let's have some fun and fire on our castle here. We'll start off with the catapult here. When I was recording this, I didn't realize at the time, but I was probably outside the effective range of the weapons. I was about six feet away from the castle when I was firing them. Let's give the crossbow a try now. I'm gonna give the catapult a couple more shots here.
Oh, there we go. There's some damage. Now let's try the ballista. I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, that thing's nice and powerful. Finally, we'll try a few shots with the trebuchet. This one will fire two pieces of ammunition at once. Oh, there we go. Well, that was a nice hit. I think I'll leave it there for this video. I'm looking forward to getting some actual games of this in. Bring back the nostalgia of the 80s. This was one of my favorite games growing up. And I think this is a pretty solid remake from what I've seen so far. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you didn't like it, what the hell are you still doing here? Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy destruction.